Hi and welcome to your third Selenium and Python tutorial. Um, today all we're going to be really going over is weights within Selenium and we're going to actually apply this in a loop as well. Um, so basically in the last tutorial all we did was go over navigating a web page. So what this basically entailed was clicking on elements, um, sending keys to text boxes. There's a lot more things you can do in Selenium via a remote web driver. Um, you can actually, they actually support uh, cookies I believe too in there so it's some pretty cool stuff um, I only covered a small fraction of it so if you're interested I'm gonna link the documentation in the subscription oh, so the subscription <laughs> in the description uh, and so you guys can check it out a little more over there so realistically we're all we're gonna cover now is weights so what a weight is is basically what you think it is um, so you're waiting for something in the web page to load now this can be explicit or implicit the difference between the two is that an explicit weight, all that really entails is that you're looking for one object in particular usually. So it might be an element on the page, it could be a text box, it could be a button, it could be whatever. But all you know is that if that element is not found within a given time period, let's say five seconds, then you're going to throw out a timeout exception, usually. Um, now an implicit weight more or less is for a bulk group of elements being loaded onto a page. Um, implicit weights I don't really use um, I never really found the need to but I, I'm sure they actually come in pretty handy from time to time but yeah implicit weights are basically for a large group of elements too when you're loading them onto a web page or when it does it itself <laughs> the web page um, because recently uh, most websites use Ajax techniques web development techniques in their websites. Um, this isn't that recent, but most, if not almost all, do today. So that's the reason we're using weights is because not every element loads at the same time. So sometimes you might get an element not visible error, and you can circumvent this by weights. Um, so it's usually good practice to put these in. Uh, again, when you're web scraping, this should be an absolute last resort. Um, there's actually an application I had using Selenium recently, which is Kind of shocking because I never found the need to, um, but for Google Trends, uh, Google makes it extremely difficult to get that data. Uh, unless you really know what you're doing um, with the network tab, then you really are going to have a hard time getting data. Uh, also, another reason I'd be using Selenium now is that Edgar, no longer Edgar being um, the SEC's database system, no longer offers the FTP service they used to have. So that may be another reason to use Selenium. Um, for those of you who have no idea what I just said, don't really worry. Uh, all, all you need to know is that automating your browser might help solve that problem. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. First things first, we need to import some packages. Now, what do we need to import to allow us to do? We need an expected condition. Um, so basically this whole list I pasted right here these are all the common expected conditions for elements so remember for an explicit weight a condition has to be met in order for this to work so these are some common ones I pasted right here I still listed the ways to find elements right here so first all we're gonna do um, before we even import the expected conditions um, function within all we're going to say, this is going to be by implementation. Um, so this is just going to allow us to select elements in a different notation. So we're going to say from selenium dot webdriver dot common dot by import by. Okay. And that's case sensitive. Now we can do the, we also need a timeout exception as well to throw an error. And we also need the webdriver wait in order for us to actually set the amount of time we want for each element um, in the given expected condition. So uh, I think I'll do the web driver wait one first. So from selenium dot web driver dot support can't type today dot UI uh, what do we want to say import in case sensitive again web driver wait and the last two, we need the expected condition. So all we're going to say is from selenium dot webdriver dot support import 
expected underscore conditions as EC. Okay, and from the last one we need, all we need is a timeout, um, and we have a syntax error here. You can forget to put the dot accessor. Um, so from selenium dot web drive, actually, excuse me, it's not web drive, it's common, dot common dot exceptions. Uh, what do we want to say? Import timeout in case sensitive again, timeout exception. Okay, that was quite a handful. Um, the reason I went line by line there instead of copying and pasting them in, um, for, it was basically for you guys to understand, okay, so here we're making the web driver actually wait a specific amount of time. Here are the expected conditions, and if neither of those basically work out, we're going to throw out a timeout exception, okay? So the next thing we want to do is define a function. We're going to separate our new script into functions to make it a little more clean. Uh, so def init underscore driver and what this function is going to do is return our driver um, and also return the amount of time we're going to wait for an individual element as well um, so all we're going to do is indent this and we're going to get our driver first off and all we're going to do after that is say driver dot wait and that will be equal to case sensitive again web driver wait how many seconds five for what driver um i actually think that's the other way around as well but let's try that later i'm gonna run that and see if that works uh okay actually an anaconda <sighs> they don't do the autofill stuff um okay let's just keep it and see if it works so Five seconds for driver, um, and what are we going to say after that? Return driver. Now the driver is going to be passed as an argument to this next function called def. I'll put a space def get underscore data, and it will take the argument of what driver. Um, creative names for the functions. I know. So let's indent that, and now what do we want to say? Um, so let's first actually go to the last URL we were at um, from the last tutorial and let's go to a table or the table right over here and let's select one random element from the table now you can select this in any way you want um, I'm just gonna use XPath because it's simple yet inefficient um, so I'm gonna put uh, elements equals uh, driver dot find underscore element uh, and then let's do use the uh, by implementation here so element by and then what dot and you can see over here we have all the ways we can do it um, however what I didn't put in uh, in this section over here was that this needs to be in capitals with the by uh, implementation over here so by xpath and then what do we want to say we'll copy and paste it in there um, that'll be just to make sure this works um, element dot text and we're just gonna run this to make sure everything's okay so we're gonna say init or actually driver equals init underscore driver okay call the function and then get underscore data and what do we want to do pass the argument awesome let's see if this works no module me okay hmm i think obviously there's an error right here um oh i'm sorry okay let's see from selenium dot common ex dot exceptions import timeout exception oh typo Whoops. Exceptions. Okay. Wow, that took me a while. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So we know our script so far worked. That was just a little test. Now what we're going to do is implement the expected condition. Now, what we want to say here is driver.wait to start. So driver.wait dot until dot and then we can say what um, we can say from one of these 
that we have up here, we're looking for the presence of the element we're looking for it to be located. That's all we're looking for. So this is just a quick example of that. Um, so until, and then here's our expected condition, right? So EC dot, and then paste that in. Um, and what do we want to say after that? We're just going to find the specific element we're looking for, okay? So what we need to do is fix the parentheses in here first because they're wrong. Okay, let's see if we have a syntax error still. Nothing. This checks out, I believe. Um, so let's run it and see if we get any errors. Now remember, we're going to wait five seconds. Um, unsupported. Ah, here's a problem we have now. So this is back up here. Um, we mixed up, or I mixed up these. So it's we're waiting for the drive, uh, we're using the driver and then waiting five seconds. Okay, let's see if this works now. I figured that was a problem. Okay, perfect. That worked like a charm. Now, um, that is one quick example of how to use expected conditions and weights um, in order to safely uh, pick out elements from a web page. Um, now you can do this for whatever you want really. See all the stuff up here, visibility of element to be clickable. You can use this for buttons, all sorts of stuff. Um, so this is a quick example. And usually it's good practice, especially with Selenium. What I really didn't do and what I'll do in a later tutorial with PhantomJS is I'll make this as legitimate as possible. Now normally I'd define a, or make a class here, create a class. Um, and then basically wrap in, or encapsulate everything in it. But right now, it's good practice to separate uh, your driver um, and from what the data you're getting basically for in separate functions. Um, it's not a bad idea to do it. Uh, so yeah, I think for now, I'm gonna cut this tutorial off and in the next tutorial, all we're going to be doing is using this exact code in a loop. Um, so we're going to be clicking on a button, let's say, X amount of times to get to the next table. Um, so what I mean by that is we're going to go, okay, so we want two, three, four, five. Should be a quick tutorial. Um, nothing really crazy, but yeah, I hope you guys learned something in this one. And yeah, rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a good one.